Live on a first Friday miracle edition of the program. Merely Bo, the great Gibbe here today. Was it 304 yesterday? We said About after 305. Three. Yeah. <laughs> I looked uh, I looked over at the clock, but I saw it a couple minutes later cuz I got caught in a conversation. Yeah. And immediately had a notification, and, and it said 308, but it said it had happened like four minutes earlier. Amazing. Amazing uh, that it happened as soon it's as a we theme. Were off. That is a theme, yeah. Not just here in the building, but everything yeah. right after three, then it can go nuts. Um, look, it's – let's set the ground rules of this when it, in a, as it comes to the Lamar Jackson situation in Baltimore. The, the non-exclusive tag that was placed on him – and I think most people listening out there understand this now, requires that two first-round picks would come back in the deal. Um, it also is contingent on him reaching an agreement with another team. So it wasn't just as straightforward as, um, you know, we can let's go get Lamar. It was straightforward as we can get Lamar, the cost is two first-round picks, and then we've got to do a deal with him that, he's, that he wants to sign. One of the distinctions that I think is important is this has nothing to do with the Daniel Jones or the Geno Smith deals that were signed. Uh, Daniel Jones's deal was signed yesterday afternoon and then, uh, or agreed to yesterday afternoon. Smith's was a couple of days ago. It's got, th these things are not similar, and they're not similar for one really important reason. If you believe the reporting that's out there, and I do, Lamar Jackson wanted a guaranteed number in the Deshaun Watson realm and probably to exceed the Deshaun Watson number of $230 million. It's important to know that the Deshaun Watson deal and that entire circumstance a year ago was one that the league had never really had before. This was a quarterback of incredible talent available in his prime. There was a legitimate bidding war for his services. Um, we were lucky enough to be able to sign him the number that's out there, the $230 million guaranteed. Um, it was well reported after that, and again, believing these reports, that others would have been more than happy to match that number and that the bidding got to that point because you had four teams all chasing a franchise quarterback in his prime. So Lamar Jackson wants – I understand it. He's an MVP. I, I totally get it. He wants that. So the NFL, that we've had a lot of people do contracts since – you know, the Rodgers deal is sense in terms of the overarching, you know, year, per year deal. And we'll get to him in a second. Um, the Kyler deal happened since. Um, but the, the, the teams in the league, there is no question that the guaranteed money for Deshaun Watson makes some people uncomfortable. And it makes, my guess is, Cincinnati, the Chargers, anybody else is going to have to sign a contract to a quarterback quite uncomfortable. So Baltimore made it clear early on that they were not going to go that big. And the reported numbers on him were anywhere from, there's a report of 130 guaranteed, 150 guaranteed, so forth and so on. So Lamar wants that money. The Ravens don't want to go that far. They said, let's see who if anybody else wants to go this far. Now, this is the part that I think gets a little sticky. And I'm just connecting dots here, but I think they're pretty easy to connect from my perspective. Within 15 minutes of the Ravens placing this tag on Lamar, several quarterback needy teams, including the Falcons, the Panthers, uh, the Commanders, uh, at one point the Ravens, although that was kind of – or the Raiders, rather, but at one point that was kind of walked back. Um, but all of those teams within the first hour of him becoming tagged say, we're out. Why publicly? Why? Why? Why publicly? Why do you leak it to Diana Rossini at 316 that the Falcons are are out of the – why would you be out? You're not interested in an MVP in his prime who's worth – We Nathan and I talked about this. He was worth the PFF numbers on him. He's worth eight points difference when he plays and when he doesn't. It's one of the biggest jumps of a guy playing and not in the league. And you're telling me you don't want him? You're telling me David Tepper in Carolina wouldn't give up two ones for Lamar Jackson in his prime? That is a dormant franchise. They have a lot of things they're trying to get built down there. He's an owner who's chased a franchise court, and he, he, no, nah, we're good. We're going to roll the dice. No, no. I, so this is the part where the C word comes in. This is the part where collusion comes in. This is the part where this feels all too convenient comes in. And I don't blame you for thinking that way. It To me, it feels like a pretty straight line of, 
hey, we don't want to pay a quarterback $230 million guaranteed. We don't want to put all this guaranteed money into quarter. Let's let's all go at this together. I think it's pretty easy to get there. I do. Um, but I also think that it's very – it's also very po- – it's possible that that is happened. Um, but it's also important that what happened with – for me at least, Gibbe, it's important that what happened – and is happening with Lamar Jackson really has nothing to do with Daniel Jones at all because what Lamar Jackson wanted from Baltimore is not what Daniel Jones wanted from the Giants. Now, everybody would take Lamar over Daniel Jones, but they're not; those two things are not the same. So this is where we are on a first Friday. Have a cocktail. The last time that Lamar Jackson played a full season in the National Football League, 2018. Yeah. The last two years, he's missed. He played in 12 games in 2022. Yeah. And 12 games in 2021. You're missing some games there, especially in the month of December when it matters no the doubt. most. I heard Stu Gotts on the Dan Levitard show today. Yeah. And he was 100% correct. Should have hired an agent. Should probably have never taken the field this year until you had a contract. Yeah. Should have played hardball with the organization and the franchise. Got hurt again and cost yourself a lot of money. Should have, maybe should have taken the contract that was offered to you. Some people will argue that. I, In terms of what, what he's worth to the franchise, I don't know. I do not fault Baltimore for applying the, the tag that they did. If indeed that they made the offer that they did, yeah, with the hundred and thirty million guaranteed, right? Offer what you can offer, and and if there's questions about whether or not you could take it to the next level, then or if there's questions about your availability, mm-hmm. then then I I don't fault Baltimore for the offer that they made or the tag that they put on him yesterday. Mm-hmm. It makes zero sense that if you're a team that's not good, that you're not wanting to line up at the doorway to meet with him on Monday at 12 o'clock when legal tampering begins. It makes zero sense. Yeah. Atlanta? Yeah, come on. What is the harm in having a conversation? Hey, Miami, you sure two was the guy? Now, I know they can't talk to Miami – so yeah. after it's a weird thing because Miami, Miami had to forfeit through, through the, pick. Yeah, they have to go all the way to the draft. But I mean, Atlanta, Carolina, I, was Washington one of those that said no thanks right away? Yeah. I, I believe. Hey, Washington, uh, we played you last year. I saw what you trotted out there against us. Uh, I, I feel like the guy that uh, is a potential free agent, <laughs> if you want him is a lot better than the guys you trotted out. Yeah, I mean, it's – and, it you know, it's not even just – although when he plays, it, he's more than enough. And if you ask anybody around the league, he's the hardest week-to-week to prepare for um, that there is because he's so unique to the skill set that he has. Um, there are legitimate questions about his health. There are legitimate questions about his ability to throw you to a yeah. Super Bowl. All of those things are fair. Um, but the notion – I just thought it was – Within an hour for all these teams to say we're out publicly, like that was a clear message. Correct. That we're we are not going to have players trying to hold themselves to the two hundred and thirty million dollar standard. We're not. We're not that that is an outlier. We're not gonna act like it even exists. Um and and I to me that's what it felt like what happened yesterday was about. It was to to publicly say, what was the what was the need? For the Falcons to say we're not – like to publicly say, oh, well, we're not in on him. Why? Why would yeah. you not be? Are you idiots? Of course you'd be in on him. If I'm your fan base Two as ones? a season ticket holder um, – Come on. I, I, it's better It's better than Ritter. <laughs> it's better than yeah. Marcus Mariota. I mean, you don't know – I mean, that, look, you, you <laughs> haven't even had, like, the conversation on what the money would have to look like. It's So, like, to your point, like, of course, as you were saying with Atlanta, like, of course you'd take that meeting and see – yeah, At Carolina, like they are rudderless. You want to give that that operation a shot in the arm? That's the sh- that's a adrenaline shot. 
That's Travolta in Pulp Fiction to Uma Thurman adrenaline shot is what that is. Like, that's the – to me, that's a no-brainer. You know, the first – it's interesting that the Raiders walked it back because the person I thought of most of this was Al Davis because this Al Davis would sign – Lamar Jackson yesterday. Two ones? Done. He would do it yesterday. Yep. And we'll have a whole campaign by the end of the week. Yeah. And he wouldn't care if any of the owners, whether their owners were mad about it or bothered by it or anything. Like, he would have that deal done yesterday. Um, and so I did think – I missed that, that the Raiders had walked it back. I saw from Field Yates yesterday that one of the teams that were out, and now, you know, according to uh, Diana Rossini, the Raiders haven't eliminated any quarterback options, including Lamar Jackson. So they, they did walk that back. Look. But the public – stuff is what was bothersome to me of like really really it's what we're gonna do come on come on. i'm gonna i'm gonna throw this out here to you mm-hmm. maybe i'm way off base you won an nfl mvp but you won it four seasons ago does it still carry the same the, does it still carry the same weight like he won uh, it in tw- he won it in 2019 um no i mean so, but he, but honestly, like, pull up what he does against us. I mean, we saw that firsthand. Yeah. Like when he plays and when he doesn't. Like I said, no, I don't know that. I don't know that he should be. But this isn't for me to litigate. I don't know that he should be the highest paid quarterback in the league. I don't know that Deshaun Watson should have been the highest paid quarterback in the league. Patrick Mahomes should be the highest paid quarterback in the league. If we're really doing this the right way, that should be it. He's the unicorn. He's the multiple MVP. He's the two-time Super Bowl champion. But guess what? The way that this whole operation works is he who has the highest bidder yeah. is the one who's going to win. Um, and rarely do these guys actually get to free agency. That's what made the Watson thing so unique. This was a franchise quarterback in his prime becoming available. Like it, this doesn't happen, this type of operation, at, in their 20s. So, And Deshaun is more obviously better as a passer than what Lamar's been historically over what what they've both done. So whatever whatever percentage of what Lamar Jackson is now compared to what he was when he won the MVP, I think we could all agree that he hasn't been able to back that up in large part because of injury. But what I would say is he is still a top five weapon in the league. He is still a top 10 quarterback in the league, 10 or 12, somewhere there. Like, if he was just available, you'd pick him for sure. Um, so he's still that. You could still build everything around him. Like, you put him in Atlanta with Arthur Smith's offense, that's a problem. I mean, that can win that division with him there. Um, Carolina's got a hell of a coaching staff they had, they've assembled. Right. I mean, Frank Reich, when he was in Indy, how many different – he had a different quarterback every year. Yeah. <laughs> Sign this guy to a three- or four-year deal, maybe even a five-year if you can get five years. I think the interesting thing is, is there is there a road back for him in Baltimore? That's That, to me, is the – or is, is this – because, you know, I mean, good grief. Some of the stuff that he's done is pretty but, remarkable. But listening or watching the social media hate unfold on the Ravens, like, fine – I am I am not upset with the with the position that the Ratbirds are in, right? And that team is in right now, not upset about it at all. Great, I'm a Browns fan. This this looks like it's going to help us potentially. I'll take oh, yeah. any I'll take any help we can get. But I I don't blame the Ravens for putting the transition tag on him. See if someone matches it or if someone makes him an offer. I think they're proving. I think they're trying to prove a point. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Everybody's like, well, you should have at least gotten the the franchise, the true franchise tag, and made like forty five million. Well, maybe the Ravens don't see it that way. Yeah, maybe, maybe the Ravens go, let's put him out there, let's see what he can get, and if someone makes an offer that's in the thirty seven to forty million dollar range, yeah, and and we want to match that, then we'll match it. Otherwise, like he's back with us next year and. We move forward. Yeah, I can't imagine he'd play for 32. Well, I, th- that's going to be on him. And yeah. again, if you had representation, yeah, that might that might be a factor in helping you navigate those waters. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I mean, as a starter, he's 45 and 16. Now, the last two years, it's 15 and 9. Uh, the previous two years, it was 24 and 6. 
Um, he's only 25 years old. Really, really young. Uh, we forget that he came into the league at 21. Yeah. So he's still a young dude. Um, won an MVP at 22. Pretty amazing. Yeah, I just like, – This is I, this is what you, I think you could say in, in, without question. If he's not in Baltimore, we're better off. Yes. If Cincinnati's better off and Pittsburgh's better off, and they're gonna ha- they would have to find a, a whole new path. Baltimore forward. has to change their entire offense because well they, they hired Munkin, it. so yeah. that they were probably headed that way anyway, whether they had Lamar or not. Um, yeah, it's a it is a fascinating play across the boards, and there's a lot of layers to it. And I'll be very curious to see by the time we get to legal tampering on Monday how much of it's how many people stick with this. You know, how many of these teams are really not going to talk to him? My 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 one piece of advice for Lamar. And, and I, I get it. You, you want to negotiate your own stuff. But you got to have someone fighting for you behind closed doors. You have to have someone burning up the phone lines for you. You have to have someone navigating the back channels while you focus on getting ready for a season. Like, you got to get someone to help you here. And, 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 and I'm not so sure the NFLPA is <laughs> – well, the answer to that, and I know that they've been a little bit involved here, but from y- y- you got to have someone fighting for you. The other thing that that does is it keeps the bad stuff from being heard by you, which is just as important, I think, sometimes as the person fighting from you. It's that the truth stuff, the truth serum stuff, isn't said directly to you. It's said to somebody else, and they can lessen the blow when it is said to you. Feelings get hurt less when you have somebody doing those things yeah. so this is going to be it's a it was a heck of a bombshell dropped yesterday and it'll be a fascinating 48 hours until next week to see how all of this goes and if quite frankly if he can go back to like will they will that all come back together i well i mean his, te- his teammates seem to be on board his With teammates the, have been the ones pushing for him to come back and resign oh, yeah and for the team I, think, to re-sign I think everybody him. wants him back they just want him back at their number that's yeah. what baltimore wants they want him back at their number and he wants to be back at a number bigger than the number that Sean Watson got here. So that's where you're in, how you're in this pickle. Yeah. And that's the spot of it. We're 50 days away from the 2023 NFL draft in Good Kansas God. City. 50, huh? I used to like it in uh, – what was originally it was like second week of – was it right after the Masters, the NFL draft? It was in April. Yeah. It definitely wasn't May. No, no. I, I, is it, I think we're back to April this year. Well, I might, or, or at least the last couple days of April. I have nothing to back this up other than just trying to connect dots, and and this is wild speculation. But I wonder if they moved it to May to, in an effort to where they could do it outside and chop it around, so the climate was a little better off. Sure, I bet. I, look at what it was here. Yeah, it was beautiful on that Sunday, but on that Thursday night, yeah, oh, rough. It was. So I I do wonder if they moved it back for that, and then it also gives them. You know, kind of a big tolt, well, big tent pole thing in every it, month. Well, and then you got, and then you got two weeks, and then you release your schedule, right? And then that leads into mandatory mini camp, and then you're down for six weeks, and then it starts. And you're forward. right, you're right back up. Yeah. Um, R- Lamar Jackson was not the only business being done in the NFL yesterday. Uh, we'll get you updated on where all of the quarterback jockeying is. Um, the Aaron Rodgers situation, Daniel Jones. I mean, what's going on in Seattle? There's a lot going on. Uh, lots of fun to be had here. Our coach was on on uh, part of my take. We we will have some of that stuff oh for boy. you, which is very very. It's fun. It's good stuff. So we'll we'll share some of that with you as the program grows along as well. We're off and running here on a first Friday edition of Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by BallyBet, coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
team of injury lawyers dedicated to every client every day. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Elk and Elk's proud partner of your Cleveland Browns. Lots of news yesterday. I mentioned this in, we were talking about Lamar earlier, the Giants and quarterback Daniel Jones. Uh, they beat the clock on the franchise tag deadline. He gets a four-year deal, 160 uh, million is the total on that. What's the guaranteed number on that one, though? Is that, was I it 95 or something? Yeah, hold on. I can tell you. Yeah. So uh, he gets a four-year deal worth 160. Uh, that allowed for the Giants to place the non-exclusive franchise tag on Saquon Barkley, which would have his number around 10 million. And they did all that in like 10 minutes. It to happened four. quickly. Yeah, it really did. Um, 82 million guaranteed. Okay. I don't. 40 million. I think it's a. I think it's a lot of money, but it, it's. I don't. It's only four years. Well, and, and right, like. I think we're going to have to start getting used to quarterbacks. I mean, it's not going to be long, and quarterbacks are going to be making $75 million. I mean, that's where we're headed. Rodgers is at $53 million or something like that now. So you're getting there quicker than ever. The cap is going to continue to go up and up and up. The importance of the position is only going to go up and up and up. And so people are going to pay a premium to have it. You know, the thing with Jones is, you know, what's he worth? He's worth that to them. Because it allows them to keep Saquon Barkley. They were a playoff team. Didn't they make the playoffs this year, the Giants? Yeah. Yeah. So they were a playoff team. That matters to them. He allows for them to continue to building with Dable. Dable probably likes him. And what are your better options? There aren't any. Well, if, if he goes out, if he goes out and lays an egg, then you go draft a quarterback. And then he can develop under Daniel Jones. <laughs> like, this gives you time to evaluate – and figure out if this past season was an anomaly or yeah. or if you really have something with Daniel Jones. Uh, he's 25 years old is the other part of it. Yeah. Um, let me just see. I'm always curious, like, from a progression stance. Okay, so last year in the first year under with Dable, he completed 67% of his passes, 32.05, 15 touchdowns, five picks. Um, those were his passing numbers. Uh, so it's pretty good, and it's he got better and better every single year. And then last year rushing, I don't know. Do you let's play guess the stats, Gibbe? What do you think? How many yards do you think he ran for last year? Daniel Jones. Yeah, I know, and, and I know this because he had fifth. Well, I know touchdown wise, he had seven touchdowns rushing, I believe, mm-hmm. because he had twenty two total. Uh, Six hundred, seven oh eight. That's a lot more than I would have. Seven oh eight on the ground. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. That's pretty good. So he ran for seven oh eight, threw sixty, completed sixty seven percent of his passes, thirty two hundred yards. And he needs another weapon or two. Yeah, I mean they didn't have much out yeah. there, um, but it allows them to build. And like I get it, I I totally get it. I I am actually surprised if you bring it back to the Lamar thing. I'm really surprised. I always thought the deal they would do with him would be like four years, two hundred fully guaranteed yeah or something like that maybe not even that much guaranteed maybe it's 175 million guaranteed but i always thought they'd make him the highest paid average per year guy and that that type of deal that they gave jones i think lamar clearly deserves more but i to me that was the number that i thought you'd get with him a short deal big money they couldn't get it done so that's how you end up in that spot there is a potential out after year three with daniel jones okay uh but from a dead cap, it would it would cost him about nine million. Yeah, I mean he's twenty five, so him. I think that that you probably hope that he plays through this and plays well, and um, you know, now you continue to grow. It, it's interesting, according to and this is on Spot Track, his cap hit is nineteen million in twenty twenty three, forty five and twenty four, thirty nine and a half in twenty twenty five, and in twenty twenty six, fifty six point five. Yeah. So, I mean, unless he's putting up giant numbers, this is probably a three-year deal. Yeah. For about, eh, given the numbers here, probably $121 million over three years. Yeah. Okay. That's that's the, that's the price of doing business at, the, yes. at that position. Um, Pete Carroll with some interesting comments. Acknowledge that Geno Smith deal won't preclude the team from drafting a quarterback at five. That he could also be just doing that to drive up if somebody wants to come up to five and draft a quarterback. Um, they also seem to be like the perfect spot for Anthony Richardson, the kid out of Florida, where he could sit for two years, three years, whatever, and yeah. and then be in a position to be developed correctly. They've never figured out the offensive side of the ball in Seattle. They've had a bunch of different coordinators there. Um, but they've got a lot of talent right now 
on on that side of the ball and so um they would have an ability to be able to do that uh this is one you should take note of the bills are expected to lose safety jordan poyer who we've talked about and tremaine edmonds in free agency according to adam schefter i feel like edmonds is had a lot of injuries here mm-hmm. recently. Poyer's over 30, 31, I think now. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, didn't he say he wanted to play a place where he didn't take his ta- his money? Uh, but yeah, he had a tax Twitter free. rant. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to say like seven hundred grand came out for New York State taxes. Florida, nothing. <laughs> so I, I, I don't blame him on that. Uh yeah, but those those would be two big losses, and you really, I mean, when when is Von Miller coming back, and what's he going to look like? Yeah, there's, there's some questions for the Buffalo Bills still. Oh, they got yeah, they've got a lot, they got a lot to sort out. I, they were, they they've got some decisions to make because last year was really their year. They were building to last year, and then they came up short. Um, and so yeah, I, they they've got a little bit of alternating in that. But by the you still have Allen, so they can always build around that. Uh, the Rams elected not to use their franchise tag on kicker Matt Gay. He now sits at the open market with free agency beginning on the 15th. Uh, Garofalo with that. Uh, Shaquille Griffin uh, being released by Jacksonville. Uh, there's that information that's out there. And the Bucks are releasing veteran Donovan Smith. So Monday is when we'll be able to really legally tamper. Yeah, I think Monday at noon. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought it was going to be over the weekend, but it's now Monday at noon, which I couldn't be happier about. Because I don't need to see that in the middle of my weekend. Uh, all right. Good deal, bad deal regarding tags. Deron Payne, Commanders, $18.95 million. Good or bad? Good for them. Good yeah. deal? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the number – well, I mean, yeah, like if he hit the open market, he would have been the best defensive tackle out there. Correct. So that's – yeah, I, that makes sense for them. They got a lot of money in that defensive line, though. Evan Ingram back to Jacksonville, eleven point three million. Good deal, bad deal. He got a young quarterback who liked him. Yep, eleven million bucks. I mean, I, it's almost from a from. I always view all this stuff from a team perspective. Like it's not a good deal for Deron Payne. He'd rather have hit the market in a year where there's not a lot of great defensive line talent. But it's a great deal for Washington. Yeah, to keep him. So I, I guess my my default is always almost any time there's a tag placed, it benefits the team. You know, the team's gonna gonna win there. Tony Pollard to the Cowboys, ten million. They're fascinating because, you know, I don't know what he's better. I love Zeke to death, but he's better. Yeah. So, but you still have Zeke under contract, right? And, and what, Zeke talked him. about that. When can you? When can they get out of that? I want to say it's not for damages. another year or two. Yeah, that was a that was a tough. That was a tough deal, man. That Ezekiel Elliott deal. Let's see. And he hasn't been the same since. It's, it's a weird six that they year, have both ninety million dollar deal for a running back. It was the last big one. It, you know, yeah. it was the last big running back deal. Like the deal we gave Chubb, the deal that the t- Titans gave Henry were much more reasonable. Um, and honestly, I think it's probably. I want to say he might be able to get out after this year, maybe. Actually, like I think they can get out from Elliott right now. Elliott is set to count sixteen million against the salary. Yeah, with non guaranteed ten point four in base, the Cowboys could look for Elliott to take a significant pay cut. But it's worth pointing out they did not make pay cut offers to Demarcus Ware and Des Bryant before releasing both players. Um, Jerry Jones loves Zeke, so he's not ready to say Elliott had reached the end of the line with the Cowboys. Said Elliott's knee injury limited him. Um, if I could replicate the feeling that I had before. Pollard got hurt in the feeling with Zeke. I'd dial it right now. That very feeling, I would not try to improve upon that right now. So uh, it sounds like they can get out from under. They could release Zeke now without much penalty. If the Cowboys cut Elliott, they would save $4.86 million. If they designated him post-June 6, they would save ten point nine. So that's probably where that's headed. I mean, that's kind of like the John Johnson thing. Yeah. And frankly, if I'm Buffalo, maybe I'll take a flyer on that. I don't know. I feel like he's lost a little bit of a step. He's definitely not the player he once was, but no. Can he still make plays for you? Well, Maybe. he he actually fits better with them than I know he's not the same. He's not as good a player as Derrick Henry is, but he's more of a dual threat guy than Henry is. Um, in his last fully healthy season, which was 2021, he ran for a thousand yards, four yards a carry, 
Um, he had 47 receptions That's out good. of the backfield for 287, just 6.1 a catch. But he was a, a reliable target out of the backfield. He burst onto the scene, man. 1631 yeah. th- and 15 touchdowns as a rookie. Josh Jacobs, 10 million. Saquon Barkley, 10 million. Mm-hmm. I think the Barkley deal makes sense. I think the deal makes sense for the Raiders, although I have no di- idea what direction the Raiders are going in. And if I'm Josh Jacobs, I'm probably not pleased to go back to Las Vegas. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing either. Right? To me, it feels like they're going to go to the bottom. Well, so there's an example. Like you're telling me that they wouldn't benefit from Lamar Jackson That's what I, put him with back the there Raiders with, Josh with Jacobs? Jacobs? Waller at tight end? Yeah. Like you've got some playmakers yeah. there. McDaniels and, and Devontae used, Adams? Yeah, and McDaniels used uh, – I mean, he had Cam Newton for a year in in New England, and that was a broken down Cam. Like a fully a healthy Lamar on the turf feels like a win. Um, in a non and this is just coming down on non NFL news, but NFL adjacent. Nick Saban says it out loud. So I've been talking about this for a decade down in Columbus. Saban saying, "quote I would rather see an NFL model in college football." I'd much rather see us drop an NFL model than where we are right now. Pay the players. They can become employees, which a lot of people in college, that's not what college football or amateur sports is supposed to be. But I'd rather see that than where we are right now, where nobody has a contract. You can leave whenever you want. You can create an institution that pay you to pay out of the school. I asked the question then, and I'll ask you now, is that what we want college football to become? He wants the control back, and the only way to get the control back is to call it what it is. But that's the most important guy in the sport saying – we made this bed, and the only way that we can make the mess, make it not a mess, is to call it what it is. That's bigly for somebody of him to say that stuff out loud. You don't absolutely. See and, and I I think that behind the scenes they're, <clears throat> excuse me, they're they're struggling with the NIL as much as everybody else, and that's Alabama. Nobody knows what to do with it. They don't know how to police it. They no. don't know how to they don't know how to hold people accountable because there's they're not there's no contracts. <laughs> So you can do whatever you want. Like people, the other thing is, is that money's drying up. So like, it's, as I knew that it would initially, there was going to be all this money in the market. And then quickly there'd be wealthy people. One thing we know about wealthy people, they don't like to lose money for nothing. Like where's my ROI. So you throw a bunch of money at a kid and then all of a sudden he transfers. You go, wait a second. I gave that kid a million six to play corner at Texas A&M. He's not here anymore. And the coach is like, I'm sorry. I couldn't, I couldn't force him to be here. There's free transfer. I can't force him to pay your money back because there's no contracts that are supposed to be there for this NIL. It's not to be used in recruiting. So there's no control over any of it right now. And that's the, that's the setup. The the whole money drying up thing. I mean, that's. People don't want to, they don't want to get it's, it's the recruiting side of it where you can do this a couple of years, but then it's like, wait a second. What did I get for this? You know? Yeah. That's the problem. Uh, so Saban saying that is of significance. Absolutely. Because you've never is. had somebody that prominent say, we need to pay these guys. Well, it, it needs to get figured out. And the fact that the NCAA can't figure it out or won't They chose it not out. to. Give I was going to say they, they won't. Yeah, the NCAA for the last 15, 20 years, I mean, essentially it's Jesus take the wheel, but you don't believe in Jesus. That's what it is. I mean, there's nobody at the ship. They, they st- you know – ice bugs straight ahead and they just went ah oh, the hell with it let's hit let's it let's see, see how far happens. we go yeah and that's what they did um they have and now they have no power left because all of these are state laws now these NLA, nil laws are state laws and the ncaa can't supersede it so they're stuck the only way out of it is to call it what it is which is professional sports in football and men's basketball those are the two revenue generators so that's the that's the way that it's going to have to be and for saving to say it is very, very noteworthy. Um, all right. Our coach was on. Pardon my take. We will have some fun with this. Seems like he had a little bit of fun. We'll have it for you coming up next. You listen to Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by Bally Bet, coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Home for the last time with Renew Home Exteriors siding and roofing products. Don't spend all day with high-pressure sales guys. The team at Renew Home Exteriors won't waste your day with hours of negotiating the price of your project. Just an upfront, fair price to make your project easy. Modernize your home with premium siding, ranging in every style and color. Renew Home Exteriors, superior products, superior service. Visit RenewEstimate.com for more. Coach Kevin Stefanski was on the latest episode of Barstool Sports' Pardon My Take. Here is Coach on game management, playing Madden, and his beard. Let me throw an analytics question. You guys are down. Uh, game situation, okay? It is you're down eight points, mm. okay? You have uh, all three of your timeouts? Three, all three of your timeouts? I think uh, so. Two minimum. But two, okay. yeah, just so say let's three. say two, three, three timeouts. Okay. Uh, there's about a minute and 48 seconds left. Okay. You are on fourth and goal on the eight-yard line. You're down eight. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah, you – can kick the field goal and then hope that you get the onside kick in the field. And well, not you have all three timeouts, so you yeah. could you yeah. kick the ball deep and yeah. use all three and hope you get the ball back. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, you're you're going in. You're close to. Did this ever yeah. happen in any games? No, 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 no games. Not in any like high profile playoff games or anything like that. No, not no not championship that games. Yeah. No NFC championship. I think games. when you get low down, I do know this. As you get lower down in the red zone, like you got to take your shot uh, mm-hmm. a lot of times. No, that, that that's not, not every time. Quarterback not, doesn't believe in that. Yeah, sort of and thing. I'm not I'm not speaking to any example, but I will say this that that inside when you get low the that eight yard line it is difficult there's not a lot of plays that that you love to be able to hold on the ball but um to your point if you don't get it now you can use your three timeouts and maybe get the ball back so when we are sitting on the couch and like say it's first and or say it's third and goal from the five and you get a five yard penalty i always am like good more room is that right no, <laughs> it's not because it takes you longer. You're eligible players. It takes them longer to get into the end zone. But it's uh, I'll tell you what, those decisions, on, it's sometimes you're like, damn it if you do, damn it if you don't. Right. Um, ultimately, I try, we try to bet on the players as much as you can and trust the guys. So do you have, how does that work for you specifically on the sideline? Do you have uh, your offensive coordinator in your ear? Do you have an analytics guy in your ear? We have uh, we have a game management coach up, up in the booth who's, the way we work our fourth down decisions at least we use the red yellow green scale which can we understand that one yeah that's yeah, like a <laughs> stoplight yep <laughs> got it yeah yeah um so we'll oftentimes like say hey you're green at at three meaning fourth and three two or one you're green all these decisions you make during the week because you look at the game you look at the matchup you look at the weather and you basically come out and say okay how many points do we need to score how's our matchup on defense those type of things because it's it's hard and now there's times when it's yellow and that's the true gut but when, there, when it's pretty clear that you should go for it based on the information you have available to you, it, it speeds up your process. Yeah. What about the uh, timeout aspect of the game? Do you ever – I've always said that, like, coaches should play Madden in the offseason just to put yourself in those game situations. I, honestly, so I grew up playing Madden. Um, I really believe our generation is maybe a little bit better at game management ha- because we've done that, because we know when you're down 10 and you got, hey, I'm going to kick the field goal now and then I'm going to get the onside, i got to get the seven later. Um, I do think all those games, I know it's silly, but I do think that all helps when it comes to game management. What about if you're down by 14 points, uh, what, two minutes left in the fourth quarter? You're going in, you score a touchdown. Do you go for two or do you kick an extra point? Uh I think you go for two in yes. that situation. Yeah, yeah. The you could be a head coach me, someday. Yeah, Penn's not that is, bad. <laughs> but the nice part is you have somebody up in the booth that's helping you with all these decisions, so you don't have to make them all in the moment. Yeah. Um, because, as you guys know, like you make a decision when it works, you're really smart. When it doesn't work, you're getting text messages or you're getting tweets from Big Cat. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, wait, I, I, you said something there about Madden that reminded me. You're cosplaying as an older guy with your beard. <laughs> Because we, I remember we had that revelation. We're like, wait, we're the same age as Kevin Stefanski. This isn't fair. Why do you, you, you are a young-looking guy, except your beard is gray. Thank you. I think is no, that, that's no. a compliment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, so, but I think you're doing it on purpose. So people are like, oh, he's been around forever. Oh, that's an yeah. Maybe I, I should. So should I dye it? Is it blonde? first of all? I tell my kids it's blonde. It's not gray. That's okay, yeah, okay. that's smart. Yep. Should I go grayer or should I? I, I? I think it's a good amount of gray. You don't want to end up like Hank, but I think that with with your face, we, I think our our theory was that you were dyeing your beard gray. Yeah, yeah. That it and it is a, a compliment beard. because we're saying basically you're way younger than maybe your beard looks. Like I'll get the reverse where I'll say I'm 38 and people are like I thought you were 50. <laughs> like mm-hmm. that sucks. Yeah, for me when it comes to the beard, it's like. Uh, I don't like to shave, mm-hmm, so same. when you just let it grow out and then you get to 
trim it every week or so. So it just kind of takes away a day of maintenance, if that makes sense. 30, 30 in place, like you know that you should trim it two days before game day because there's going to no, be all these HD cameras? No, but I have cameras. an unbelievable barber that I go to. Uh, I'll get, can I give him a plug? Yeah, yeah. shout him out. Uh, Sean Gormley, he's the Irish barber, uh, Irish barber in Rocky River, uh, Ohio. He has a pub right next door to the barber shop that he also owns, so you can have a pint while you're getting your uh, haircut. Right, that's make great. sure we bleep all that. <laughs> um, yeah. No, uh, that's. I mean, that sounds like the perfect barber shop. Yeah. You gotta go. You're just sitting there and drinking a beer and having. I like. I mean, sometimes I like to almost close my eyes and just take a little <laughs> fall asleep. Yeah. Take. A, you're up. I gotta be honest with you. I'm worried about the shards going into the beer. Yeah. I, How do you work I don't, around that? I understand having the beer before. I, before or after. Or I think, after. I, I, I think I, during, I would be worried about yeah, I, shards I don't, getting in the beer. Yeah, and Shout out. I, I love that pub. That's why I left that clip in. Uh, they have a fantastic balcony, second floor, that you, go, you literally have to crawl through a window to go out and be on. It's pretty awesome. But it is about as, <laughs> it's about as great an Irish pub as you're going to find. Okay. Well, that's fantastic. a good job. Yeah. So he does beard trimming too for him. Clearly, he takes care of the, the beard. I know the barber shop right next door. I didn't realize yeah. two and one there. I got to have my guys at Sal's be maybe maybe need to expand a little bit and we get a little beard trim in addition to the hair trim. Uh, that might be the way that we get that done. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. There's a lot going on getting ready for a game. <laughs> there is, <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought it was you know Nathan and I always talk about that like you know these guys should play Madden just for like game clock management because. 90% of the stuff you see on a Sunday when you're, like, banging your head against the wall, you're like, well, if you just played Madden, you'd understand that always keep more clock time. You know, yeah. Use, keep the more clock, the better. Be aware. So I, th- I thought that was that was a nice one. Um, that's funny on, like, the beard strategy. <laughs> I, I tell my kids it's blonde. Yeah. Coach, understand that we are monitoring this, and we look forward to having <laughs> you back in studio soon to talk about your blonde beard. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Um, also, their theory that the, he was trying to make himself look older. Uh, I thought that was funny as well. Yeah. So, I, good. I mean, look, he played along. It's a lot of fun for everybody. They're great. Um, it continued. Uh, they uh, Big Cat and PMT got him into um, got him into reliving the 2020 playoffs, of course. Uh, here is that clip. Are you superstitious at all? Uh, not really. No, I don't think so. Okay. Cause that yeah. would explain for why you didn't sit out the second playoff game after you had COVID, uh, against the Steelers. Cause I would have sat that out if I were you. Yeah. Um, we gave you credit the, for that, by the way. Yeah. Are with, you, did, did, have you won a playoff game? <laughs> Technically? Yes. Oh, maybe no. Does that count? If I, I if I wasn't there, we yeah. gave you credit. And then a bunch of Steelers fans were like, he wasn't even on the <laughs> sideline. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. I know this, <laughs> that it was the most surreal now, it happened the next year, but it wasn't a playoff game. I missed the game. Uh, we were playing the Raiders at our place. But I can't describe to you how weird it was, like out-of-body type stuff, where you're watching your football team play in a playoff game. You're in your basement. You're sick. Your family's upstairs. It was just the strangest you, time. Yeah. You actually had a quote after that that I love, that you said that it was harder to watch the games than be 100%, in the games. Um, 100%. Yeah, and that's we I know. get it. We know. No, I get it. You, I was pacing up and down. I have the call sheet in front of me, which – I don't know why. And I'm trying to figure out what they're calling next. And when you, that's why if you guys were on the sideline and you're calling plays, you have the power. Yeah. You can make decisions. So it's the nervous energy is not there when you're in the moment calling plays. I was so nervous going up and down. Just, it was incredible. How did you prepare for that game as a, as a head coach? You're sick. How much can you actually put into place and how much do you trust your guys to? Well, I mean, I was available to game plan all week. Uh, I, I ran the meetings, you know, from my basement because I wasn't sick. I mean, well, I had COVID, but I wasn't like yeah. ill. Um, but I was running the Zoom meetings. And then I did tell the coaches, you know, Mike Prefer was our acting head coach in that game. I told Alex Van Pelt, who called the plays, I'm like, do not think about me looking over your shoulder. You guys just be fearless. Do, do what I know you're capable of doing. And mm-hmm. they did. And so, uh, I mean, it was an incredible season for the Browns. I know that you have – aspirations to take the Browns deeper in the playoffs, but that specific season getting to the playoffs, like were you getting stopped at the grocery store and just everywhere? Like, thank you so much coach. Well, I got, it was all before the season too. I can't tell you how many times I was reminded that the team hadn't been to the playoffs since. And I was like 30, I I wasn't here for any of that. Right. You had to Mm -hmm. suffer. Like I didn't live that. Um, So that didn't, I didn't matter to me. And then going to the playoffs, 
you know, you want to set your bar a little bit higher than just going to the playoffs. But I did. I remember I was going through the airport in Cleveland, and one of the TSA agent comes up and says, uh, "Thank you for beating Pittsburgh. That was our Super Bowl." Yeah. And I'm like, "No, I want the Super Bowl <laughs> the Super to be Bowl. your yeah. Super Bowl." Yeah. Uh, yes. But there is something about beating those Steelers. You're up. Absolutely. Good stuff there, and th- that was that whole year was so surreal. I mean, that's the legendary Jim Donovan. All that's missing is all of you. I mean. It's hard to believe that that was our reality for that year, wasn't it? I mean, it's hard to believe that's two years ago. Yeah, three yeah. years ago. Three years ago is when it started. Yeah, three. Yeah, three COVID years ago, like this week. This week. Yeah, it was when it was three like. Years. Yeah, because again, he was out. Yeah, his girl was in Mexico. Correct. Is he even on the calendar? Like we, we were. He must do that. He must go to the combine every year, and then the next week he's off. Because that's exactly what it was. Yeah. We saw him. We all were together at the combine. Yeah, which. In probably 20, was a super spreader 20. event that we didn't know about. Yeah, so we were all together at the Combine, and then he went to Mexico, and you and I were here the next week. And then, because it was Big Ten Tournament. They were getting ready for the, the ACC at noon yeah. on that Thursday. And they were like, the Ivy League bailed on like Tuesday. They said, we're out. There was an N- the NBA thing happened Wednesday That's night. That's right, it was they Wednesday night. running out. Like, That's no, right. No, no, nope. stop, we're Everybody not playing. Stop. Everybody go to the locker room. That's right, Rudy Gobert. Yes. Yeah. And then that shut it down and away you went. And then it was like, well, we, we're postponing everything. And then it was canceled. And then it was like, actually, everything's canceled. Yeah. We'll see I, you. I've in, got every piece of our equipment right. on this table going, all right, you're taking this case. You're taking this. And yeah, we did that on a Friday. Yeah. And yeah. I'll see you when I see you. Yeah. And we didn't know what that was. You had no idea. You we came back meant. for training camp. And then we were here for a little bit and then out again. And there was no one in the building except us and football <laughs> oh my god yeah i mean it, that was nuts yeah it was yeah i mean there was no cafeteria i smuggled in i can say it now i smuggled in a <laughs> microwave at like 11 o'clock at night right <laughs> the one night because i was like we got to be able to I mean, eat you have to eat something like, yeah yeah i remember even going like the first time i went to the grocery store and i was dressed like doc brown and back to the future yeah we weren't allowed tour. out of this room like was, and then yeah, yeah it's crazy crazy what where all that was but yeah i mean yeah that's imagine him standing in his basement with a call sheet watching us play and we called the game we called the game from first energy in the national oh, tv right. booth that's like right. the biggest moment yeah zagura went to games zagura well zagura went to baltimore uh he went to the afc north games he went to the playoff game right he in went Pittsburgh. to the playoff did he, game did he go to kansas city no, or not no one went to kansas city yeah and and we we literally called the game off of two large screens. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely surreal. We'll have more of that interview uh, from Coach Stefanski on Pardon My Take. Uh, that is coming up uh, here in the second hour. In addition to that, we hit a little thing or not a thing. You'll hear uh, Z's conversation with Cynthia, Fr- Cynthia Freeland, great friend of the program. That will be coming up next. You'll listen to Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by Ballybet, coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
You're cheering your Cleveland Browns to help your favorite four-legged companion. Barking Backers presented by Milk Bones, Brown's newest club for pet parents worldwide. Sign up today at BarkingBackers.com. Barking Backers, the fan club for dogs. And now we head back to the NFL Combine, a conversation Z had with the network's analytics expert, Cynthia Freeland. Very happy now. You guys are down. Freeland from the NFL Network. She is their analytics analyst. Woo! Cynthia, there we go. Got it. Wow, that's you gotta, how you know you're a pro. You got to navigate some tough waters in you there. Do. That could go sideways in a hurry. It, it really can. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I've sat here and keeping a straight face is my secret power. When that when when it goes sideways, I'm like, yep, that's what we're going with. And we're just going to go ahead and pretend <laughs> like that didn't just happen. <laughs> Cynthia, thank you so much for for being with us and, and just you know. I want to start on a top level because as the Cleveland Browns, I know that you know we deal with this a lot. Oh, the Browns use analytics. The Browns use Wait, did you th- you do? We apparently. Oh, and some that? people are up in arms about it. So, <laughs> what what does that mean to to you? <clears throat> just analytics in general and how it can be applied in the National Football League. Well, I think first off, the Browns do a really good job of like sure we can call the word analytics. I don't even know what that means anymore, like the A word. It's just sure. overused. But the the reality is it's like it's organizing your data in such a way that it's usable and in a timely manner. Like in the time you can use it. Right? Yep. That's it. That's all it that's all it is. It's perfect. And, and and like let's keep it that simple because the reality is is it takes a lot for it to be that simple and that's what the Browns do really well. They do a lot of advanced, sophisticated things, but it's also that you can make quick decisions that are higher probability of being the outcome that you want. Not perfect. Nothing's a perfect decision. I mean, Isn't it hard for people to get their I head know. around that, though? It's I like, know. well, if you used analytics, it, you have to get the right outcome. <laughs> oh, but that drives you're me crazy. just trying to, on the margins, improve the likelihood of right. the desired outcome. Think about it. This is, this is, to me, this like crystallizes it, right? If there's 70 plays in a football game, if you are getting 10% better, those are seven plays. Now, how many games have come down to seven plays? All of them. Uh, right. <laughs> so the reality is, is that's 10%. Right. Hello, that's pretty good. Yeah. So just that I hate on the broad. The, you can imagine I sit there and sometimes like I'm wearing these big like we're wearing you know microphone right now and, and earphones right now. I sit there and I have to like cover my ears like no I like rock back and forth. The <laughs> yeah, analytics right. say to go from like what are what analytics are you using? Like I don't know what it says like their book says to go and I don't know if their right tackles beaten up. I don't know if their quarterback just sure. got sacked six times and he's like seeing stars like what it, no I don't know what it says. Right. Don't. So don't tell me what it says. I don't know. It drives me crazy. As somebody who lives in this world, I find one of the biggest challenges is outcome bias. Oh, of course. Where people don't understand 100%. that you can have the right process <laughs> and not get the right outcome. I would imagine a lot of people listening have gone to Vegas, and they go and they play blackjack, yep. and they've yep. got 11. The dealer's showing a six. You double down because the odds yep. are in your favor, and that's how you have an, a little yep. bit of an advantage over the house. You're not always going to win that double no. down, and it can no. be very frustrating. We don't, but it was still the right decision. You know, in multiple, remember you took like the the SAT. Like, oh sure. Like, and you know how they told you like you should guess if you can narrow it down to th- like there's five choices. Yep. So you got a, if you're guessing, you have a 20 percent chance of getting it right. If you can narrow down two of those, you've increased your chances of being right to 33 percent. Right. You now still have to pick the right one to get the hundred, but you've increased the chances that you're going to pick the right one. Like that's all it is. Yeah. People get people get real like they get mad at me like some of the old get off my lawn coaches will get really mad at me because they're like you said and, and then we lo- and we won the game I'm like yeah I I know I was like but the, you were not the favorite in that game because right life right. and football <laughs> games are not the simulations where there's an infinite number of simulations where if you increase your odds it's going to bear out to that over time but it's one. <laughs> It's one thing. Also, like, it's like, oh, I said you were going to win in 58% of outcomes. <laughs> that's, right? not even... that's still 42% times you're going to lose, 42 out of 100. That's still <laughs> a decent number. Yeah. That's, I think, do you, do you find, as, as you meant get off my lawn, that that is kind of one of the real challenges in, because every business does it. Every, yeah. every th- business does it. If you're not, then. Then you're like, struggling and yeah. you're missing out on right. better profits, better margins, the, right. et cetera. When you is that one of the challenges, just getting people to understand what we're actually talking about? You're not saying because we put this work and we put this process in, it's automatic. Right. But what we're saying is over a billion simulations, you would have a better outcome more often than you would without making this decision. I think it's more like how organized. Like, I think we all agree, like if you're more organized and you like like you can be the best football mind in the world. But if you're a scatterbrain, you can't use that information. You have to be able to be actionable with your insights. Yep. I used to be a banker, so it actually doesn't make me so crazy when they don't listen because I'm like, great, then I'll just go over here. You've revealed yourself to me, yeah. which is great. I like knowing that. Now sure. I know who I can be. 
Right. You know, like, I like, like that. It, it, like I'm, I, maybe I've just been doing like a lot of therapy, like namaste. I just like let it go. But like, <laughs> you know, like I think all football good. people need a lot of therapy. Let's be clear. We all do. But no doubt. <laughs> what, what are we doing? We're watching people run at each other full speed. Like we're all a little crazy, but no, but uh, I do, like, I think it's, I think it's like having patience is like, if you love something that you're doing, like I don't get too worked up over it anymore because now I'm just kind of like, okay, like. Yeah, I, I know right. you, you, like if you don't want to get a little better, if you want to be disorganized, if you don't want to use this information, I will use it. I'll and use buy it. The right and I will, stock. right? I will profit. And then from I will it. buy Apple, la- like uh, twenty years ago. And you can buy whatever's not. You know what I mean? You like can buy your yeah. old blue chip. Exactly. You, you can buy GM stock, and I'll buy. No, <laughs> I'll I, buy I'm it. a GM baby, so I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> My dad. All right, let's talk about trends that you are seeing yep. in the league. And I want to throw one thing out at you uh-huh. and, and get your reaction to it. So you look at the last. I think it's the last eight Super Bowl champions. Yep. I think six or seven of them are top five in the league in scoring offense. Mm-hmm. Most of them are in the top three, and then there was the one outlier that was eighth. But all of them are in the top quartile of the league in scoring. Mm-hmm. Are we focusing on too many things, or do you need to be an elite scoring team to win in the NFL today? Well, there's a couple things in play. Number one, the rules have changed such that you have an advantage if your offense is good. And there, that's part of it's part of how we have evolved this game. It's not the same as it was. Like, we talk about this all the time. It's like a couple of people keep asking me, like, is Bryce Young too start small to start a quarterback? Like, if you were to have him put him on a 1992 team, he would be. Sure. But this is how the league's evolved because that's how college evolved. So that's the other thing that's happening. College has evolved so that the rules favor offense. NFL has evolved so that we have more. It, we, it's for safety. And, by the way, they're great changes. I'm, I'm all into, like, everything that's been happening. But it's the evolution of the game. So – the, the the thing that you have to realize is it also does make like your corners more valuable and your stopping of of people scoring more valuable so yeah. I, no it, but the reality is is and if you all look at some of the 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 top scoring offenses like some of them had to like well one the eagles played a more favorable schedule the nfc yes, uh, nfc is much easier <laughs> conference than the afc number 1 and then number 2 the chiefs had to because look at who they played so it it's sure but the good teams tend to score anyways but and also it's just and and skill players have evolved in certain ways where we have advantages in passing right now because we're passing more than ever and quicker scores happen so you have those 70 plays in a game and you're passing more often maybe you even have 80 plays now right so it's just kind of the evolution of what we've seen so coming out of college there's more focus on passing passing tends to score faster and then you have a longer game from a actual standpoint right because that you're not running which takes more time off the clock makes this game shorter Absolutely. It's all kind of right. go, it it's all right. kind of converges, can, right? Sure. But that actually means that like if you were to be able to like get Nick Chubb to just like run every single down, you wouldn't need to be the top scoring offense and you could still win games. Like it's, squeeze it, the football. Right. So it's it's just kind of like what we have more passing. So of sure. course the, that it's going to be up more. You're I playing would, more I think snaps. you have more margin for error if you're a team that can pass because then you can win from a variety of paths. You don't need to be in right. control ahead to run. Yep. So let me ask you this. You're Cynthia, you are the GM. Great. What, in your mind, you can go three or you can go five, up to you, the most important positions. Take quarterback out. We all yeah, we have, we have one. To, right. Take quarterback out of it. The next three most important mm-hmm. positions in your mind from your data and just from yeah. everything you know about the game. Pass rusher. Okay. Uh, left Miles tackle. Garrett. Okay. And Bring back Joe Thomas. Okay. Yeah, no, I love Joe's like what a human. I mean, oh my what god, I was like crying when he was the Sorry. happiest person at the Super Bowl ever to be, as he should, with his yellow jacket. I'm like, yeah. you, hold on, really quick. So I asked him, are you going to use your playing face for your bust, or are you going to use your face now? Because you know he's lost some weight. So it's a oh, it's uh, we're very, well aware of very he's an Adonis, yes. very very interesting. He's like, going old face? school. He's I going. Is. He's going pudgy. I know. With a little beard, I loved I it. I yeah. loved it. So, anyways, um, and then I would say, uh, I would probably say wide receiver, and then after that corner, but. The corner and wide receiver, like, this is the year, I think, where we start to see, like, if you have a really good corner, you're starting to see it pay dividends. Like, look at the Jets. They didn't have a great team top to bottom. Sauce. But you get you put Sauce in there. And also, you know, DJ Reed's Reed great, too. Great, yeah. Right? That was a great free agent. That was a great – and they had a huge advantage because of those two things together. So – Corner, it's, we didn't have great corners coming out of the past few drafts. We had a few, but not the depth of it. And we had a lot of depth at receiver. So now 30. these things even back out because I think the corners are starting to become, the defensive backs coming out of college are starting to sort of catch up. It's going to be fun. going to be fun. See, listen, you, we, we got, we've got the, the edge rusher. We've got the corners. We've got Amari. I love Miles Garrett. It's another... like my favorite. No, like, he's... like. He's a different kind of guy. I don't actually think we're the same species, him and No, me. exactly. Like, he is, ha, I'm, like, a little too little for that. Like, he is how, ginormous. He's a ginormous human yeah. being. Anyways, he's great. I love Tremendous. it. Tremendous. You're great. Thank oh, you so thanks, much for being with us. Me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was great. We'll do, we'll do it again in the future. You're up. Thanks. Bye. Bye.
All right, good stuff there with Z and Cynthia Freeland. She's always great. We have her on a couple times a year. Always does a great job. Sheds some light on some things, views things in a different way, and is always uh, such such a good person to run into at the Combine. Uh, coming up next, we play a little thing or not a thing. We'll hit back into the pardon my take quotes from Coach a little bit later as well. You listen to Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by Bally Bet, coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland. The most passionate fan base of the NFL join the Browns season ticket member waitlist today. It's your best chance securing tickets for all home games in future seasons. Don't miss out. Go to clevelandbrowns.com slash tickets or call 440-891-5050 to reserve your spots today. Time for a little thing or not a thing. Hello, Gibby. Steve Palazzolo one minute ago. Okay. Pro football focus. How about an AFC East featuring Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, and Mac Jones? So is this off the uh, Zolak comments in Boston today? Yes. All right. So remember. Brady, and by the way, Zolak earlier today, Brady may go to Miami. I think that's 100% in play. So that's that's coming on the heels of Eisen's comments on Monday. Uh, Brady rebuffed it yesterday saying anyone who's ever had a cat, we said he should have been a dog guy. We understand that. Um, by the way, I was thinking about how formidable cats are. And how terrifying they are. Awful. Well, they're awful, for starters. I'm, I'm allergic, so my bias yes. starts there. Um, and then it just continues with just, I just think they're incredibly untrustworthy. Um, my brother had a cat who won. This is, I, I watched this happen. The cat hit a bat 
out of the air with its paw and then ate it. Like, that's how formidable a cat can be. Yeah. Like, Buddy Garrity would just lay on the ground and not move bats flying around. Yeah. That's the difference. I, I don't need to deal with that. Yeah. I don't want yeah, to deal I'm with that. I'm not dealing with that. Now, the only problem with Buddy Garrity is Buddy Garrity, he's going to get into chasing the squirrels here at some point. He's got, it's coming. I, we had throw up last night, in the, which is a rare rarity for him. But it wasn't food yeah. throw up. It was kind of bile-ish. So that, Green? Is he eating a lot of grass? I mean, that's my guess is what it was. He's eating a lot of grass. He's got a, he's got a stomach ache. Yeah. So that's it. My my dog inevitably, if she's gotten into something she yeah. shouldn't have, I'll take her outside. She's eating as much grass like like a cow. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, eh, that's this isn't go good. Well. Yeah. I'm gonna leave her out here for a little bit longer. Sure enough, she throws it up. That's what happens. Yeah. Yep. So that's what got him last night. Ooh. Yeah. That's not uh woke up to that this carpet morning. or tile? Oh no no, he's he's tiled. Oh, okay. In, it was in, in the, it was in his thing. It was in the pen. Just on, yeah, it was in there. So he's it's fine. Easy cleanup. Wipe it up. He's safe, pal. All right. Um, but no, that feels. Look, there's enough smoke around it. You know, there's definitely enough smoke. Uh, come on, man. Are you gonna stop? Like you're gonna walk? You're gonna come back again? You're ruining. Right. You're ruining. You're you're tarnishing your legacy by returning and continuing to return. I'll just push back on that a little bit. That's a hot like, take. But. Well, no. <laughs> the only thing I'll push back on is, like, Michael Jordan is still revered. Nobody's like, oh, yeah, he was just average with the Wizards. My guess is most people don't even remember he played for the Wizards. I'm looking up the numbers. I think he did it twice. I think he played two seasons with the Wizards. They didn't make the playoffs either time. I mean, the average. Either year. He, his final season, he played every game, 82 games. Of course he did. 20 points, 6.1 rebounds, 3.8 assists, one and a half steals. Yeah. 2001, 60 games, 22.9 points, 5.7 rebounds, 5.2 assists, 1.4 steals. Mm-hmm. He's great. They weren't because it was him and a bunch of stiffs. But, yeah, they were good. Here's it. Here's the number. Here's the number that stands out from those two teams. I'll guess the stats. Three point percentage for Michael Jordan in 2001. That was the year he averaged 22.9 points and played 34 percent. Can I interest you in 18.9? Oof. Just different. Just didn't shoot him then. No. Yeah. But I, I guess the point is like, people. I mean, how many people would even remember that he played there? You know, like in the moment we do, but then I think most people when they think of Jordan, I mean, my kids just think of the shoes, but I think most people when they remember him, it's the Utah shot. I mean, that's, that's it. In terms of like, (laughs) there's another shot that I unfortunately, oh, for sure. I just mean like the last image of him. I think most people envision that shot in Utah. They don't think about that. He played for the wizards. You know, how many people remember magic Johnson played like in the mid nineties, awkwardly for the Lakers. Yeah. I mean, like, I want to say it was like 95, 96. They had, like, Nick Van Exel and those guys, and he was a he, – he had already been, like, a coach. That didn't work, so he came back and tried to play. Uh, or maybe he did – maybe it was inverted. But either way, he played, like, the end of a season for the Lakers in, like, the mid-'90s. And what that did is that kept him from going into the Hall of Fame with Bird in the same year. They would have gone in at the same time. Um, but he came back and played. I don't know how many people remember that. I uh, until you mention that, not not me. It was a big deal. Yeah, when it happened, but so he was done. His last year was ninety one, ninety one, ninety two, or ninety one's his last year. And that was Bird's HIV. last year, right? Then he, they both played in the Olympics and Dream Team in ninety two. Yep. And then he came back. I want to say it was either ninety five or ninety six. Well, maybe that wasn't Bird. Larry's last game was against the Cavs in the playoffs. Was it? Mm-hmm. But you just don't remember that. 91. You, yeah, 91. Yeah, so they were they were set to go into the hall at the same time. Magic's last full year was 90-91. Um, that was when they lost to the Bulls. And then 91-90. So he sat out four full seasons, yeah, and then he came back in 95-96 at age 36 with the Lakers. Uh, and, and came back, and what did he end up doing? He averaged 14... 14.6 points, seven assists, six boards in 32 games. 
Not too shabby. No. After four years out, yeah. By the way, I, 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 I'm, I'm assuming you've seen the trailer for it, but the movie Air that's getting ready to come out. Yeah, yeah, the Jordan one. Ha- recruiting him and getting him. Yeah. It looks fantastic. Yeah. Every time I see a trailer, I'm like, yeah, I'm in. I'm all in on this. Yeah, I, I think that Affleck directed it, didn't he? Yeah. He probably shouldn't have played Phil Knight. They should have got somebody else to play Phil Knight. But I think Damon's going to crush the Sonny Vaccaro part. I don't even know if kids are aware who Sonny Vaccaro is. But he basically no launched one. the Nike basketball line, and then he launched the Adidas basketball line. Both. And is one of the most important figures in college basketball recruiting, all of it. And, and the history. tennis shoes. And, and sneakers, basketball shoes. All of it. Yep. Yeah, like the whole thing. I don't know. No. Tom Brady, enjoy retirement. Don't where would you have this? Back. Where would you have this? If he plays, would the Bills still be your pick? Bills still won. Brady and the Brady on the Dolphins better than Rodgers on the Jets. I think so. I bet. I, I think I might have Miami ahead of Buffalo. I wouldn't be afraid to, based on you know Buffalo's got a lot of questions. I Miami's agree. ready to roll. Like those Miami's got some Waddle, good defense. Waddle and Hill. Yeah, I, I'd go Even Miami. At 46, Brady. You still have Tua. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, I, that's a pretty enviable spot. Dead last, Mac Jones. <laughs> yes, despite uh, what his teammates say. Hey, he's a good guy. We sure about that? Not sure. Yeah. We played that clip, I think, right before the combine. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we sure, McCordy? We sure about that? That's right. Uh, how about a little thing or not a thing? Let's do it. Uh, I've got a, I've got a couple little articles here. Okay. So Cody Benjamin, CBS Sports, the 2023 NFL trades that should happen. Okay. Oh, uh, the first one is Rogers to the Jets. Okay. Now, <laughs> here's the here's the problem with the compensation on this, and we'll get to the other ones. It, okay. It actually, discuss thing or not a thing. He's like, Packers get a 2023 second rounder and a 2024 conditional first rounder. That's all it's going to take to get Aaron Rodgers to the Jets? Like, I mean, that feels like theft. I think so. Unless they're, unless they're going to pick up most of the salary. Unless Rodgers is playing hardball with them and saying the only thing I will – the only place I'll go is the Jets, and I don't want them giving up this. Otherwise, I'll retire. This is the only way to get anything from me. Yeah. I don't – Obviously, it's a thing going yeah. to the Jets. Yeah. Kirk Cousins to the 49ers for a 2023 third and a 2024 second. Again, he's spitballing. He's throwing yeah, stuff yeah, up. Yeah, throwing funny stuff out. This does thing th- or not a thing? This is not a thing because they've already had this in Garoppolo. Cousins is basically just Garoppolo except he stays healthy. And they've had a healthy Garoppolo. It can get you to the precipice, but it can't get you over the edge. So, no, I think not a thing, Cousins to the Niners. I don't think that would change them. It wouldn't change the way I view them at all. No. I think sometimes Cousins, people who play a lot of fantasy football love Cousins because statistically he's great. But if you think about moments and you think about winning the games that matter the most, his best win, he's got to win down in New Orleans. That's really in the playoffs. It's his best win. Yeah. It's a good win. But it's, yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, he's yeah. gotten you as far as he's going to get you. Yeah. Uh, Derek Henry to the Dolphins for a third round pick. Thing or not a thing? With Tom Brady, thing. No, I mean, this is. If this Tom would, Brady goes yeah. there, absolutely. This would be the type of thing that they are a team that would, you know, Z mentioned the Bills for Travis, for Derrick Henry. Um, and my only pushback was there, which is he doesn't catch the ball to the backfield much. But you don't have to in Miami. You know, in Miami, you could be, you could split carries. It's a great place to live. No taxes, no state tax, rather. Um, and all of that weapon on the perimeter. I mean, it feels like it'd be the, that would be a thing to me. I think he could do some good there. Absolutely. Uh, this is a good one here. Chris Godwin. It's not good for us. Chris yeah. Godwin to the Ravens for a 2023 third rounder and a 2024 conditional fifth rounder. How about Chris Godwin to the Browns for a 2023 third rounder and a 2024 conditional fifth rounder? If that were on the table. Like, can we get that done? I would be interested in that. Yeah. Um, he is coming million. off. He, he's – Coming off a serious injury, still a thousand yard receiver, though he's just 27 uh, years of age. Um, boy, if that's the ask, I'd love that. I, I would. I don't re- want it there. No, no. Actually, what I would like, if it's not to the Browns, 
I'd like to see that Ravens replaced with Bears. There you go. There you extra, go. Extra draft capital if you move you back. Go. Go Absolutely. Get God, go get Field some weapons. See, yeah. what the, see what the guy can do. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, who, by the way, is on McAfee today. That'll be interesting to monitor. <laughs> Boy, that should be interesting indeed. DeAndre Hopkins to the Bears. Hopkins and a fifth rounder for a second rounder and a fifth rounder. I mean, I to me, this is not – I don't think the thing this, this not a thing. Th- I would say this is not a thing because I don't think this doesn't seem like a fit in any way. Nope. Both for him or them. Um, I think if I'm them, I want to build younger guys around him. Uh, like you mentioned, Godwin. He's Godwin's younger than Hopkins, right? Hopkins got to be approaching thirty or better. That's what I'm looking um, at. DeAndre Hopkins is thirty. Yeah. So I would I would want to go younger more than than anything else. Um, Hopkins to me feels like, you know, he's a place that's a win now place. Like he's not going to be happy there. No. So I, to me, that feels like not a thing. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins in 2022, 64 catches, 717 yards, three touchdowns. He did miss the first yeah, six he's suspended. Games. Yeah. So I don't know how many games he played in. Where is that? Why is that not on this list? Yeah, he was suspended for a while. Correct. But I feel like he missed a, another game in there as well. Uh, why is it so difficult? Nine games. So yeah. just over half. Thing or not a thing. Brandon Cooks to the Cowboys for a 2023 20, conditional fourth round pick. Here's another one. Can we do this? I'll oh, do this. I, Let's do this deal. Conditional fourth for Brandon Cooks. Sold. Well, I need to know what Brandon Cooks has done recently. He can run in a straight line fast. Okay. So 57 we need that, catches, and he can catch it. 700 yards, three touchdowns. What's the yards per catch on that? Who is he? 12.3. Okay. Yeah. Bring him, bring him on up. Year before, 90 catches for 1,000 yards, six touchdowns. 11 and a half yards per reception. Once, what did he have the last year he played? Like, didn't Deshaun play with him two years ago? Uh, yeah, in 2020. All right, here's his numbers with Watson. 81 for 1150, 14 yards a catch, six touchdowns. Sold. For a fourth rounder? Yeah. I'll give you Adam. a seventh, too, so I don't have to work as much on day three of the there draft. You <laughs> Would you like a sixth? Now you're thinking. Now yeah. you're thinking. Exactly. Yeah. I am i don't care about picks. I'm over the picks. Get, Get me guys. We need guys. Need guys now. Uh, this is one that I scratch my head on, and I, I don't know why it, it would even be done. Thing or not a thing. Darren Waller to the Giants from the Raiders, and the Raiders get a third-round pick. I think Darren Waller is worth a little more than that, but – What's his age? He's got he's got some off field stuff too, doesn't he? Yeah. Didn't he just marry Kelsey Plum? Yes. Uh, WNBA player. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really good player. I think he just married her. Uh, yeah. He's thirty. Yeah, so it's getting there. Um, I mean, hey. if I'm the if I'm the Raiders, you're in punt on everything mode. For the Giants, they got to get pass catchers. That feels like a thing to me if they could pull that off. Uh, thing or not a thing. The New Orleans Saints trade Cameron Jordan to the Denver Broncos for a third and a fifth. Mm. I mean, he's a nice player, but I don't. That doesn't shift the balance of power. The, the, The last one is one that I can absolutely see happening. Like that feels like a lock stock and two smoking barrel thing. Uh, it feels right up there. alley. Well, and. I think there's a lot of, I think there's a little more smoke there than people want to let on. Jalen Ramsey to the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. For a 2023 first. That is pick number 30 and a 2024 conditional fourth rounder. The um, huge thing. This they feels paid like a ton of money. If you told me tomorrow this deal happened, I'd say yeah. Makes sense. The team, they do this, they have a history of this. He'd play well there. That feels like a absolutely believable thing. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, All right, from ESPN.com, ranking the NFL team best fits for Lamar Jackson. All right. Thing thing or not a thing, number 16, they list the Green Bay Packers. (laughs) This is Bill Barnwell. Yeah. No, not. Not Not a thing. Not a thing. 
Agreed. No, no, no. I think you're going to. I think the one to do here, Gibbe, how far do you have to go down where you say fit? Well, I, 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 could, I could go fit at 15. Who is that? 49ers. Yeah. I, I don't think that would be a bad fit. Uh, Minnesota at number 14? I don't think so. No. No. Tennessee, I mean, it, no. So, Niners, the Niners aren't going to pay him, though, that money that he wants. I mean, this is it's more complicated than that. One other thing to remember, too, like in terms of these teams saying we're out on this, remember that just a year ago, um, the Falcons being in on Deshaun Watson forced them to have to trade Matt Ryan. So, that's the other thing you got to be careful with here a little bit. Well, so. it, it, what do you have from a first-round standpoint? It's yeah. going to cost you two first-round picks. So the, he has the Colts too high on this. He's got the Jets too high on this. He's got the Patriots at 14. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, you know. So in terms of the teams that, to me, it would make sense. Or no. So he's, he's got the Falcons one. That would make all the sense in the world. He's got Carolina two. That makes all the sense in the world. Vegas is five. That would be a thing. That makes sense. Um Miami at seven. Tampa Bay doesn't make sense. They're in cap hell. Bears don't make any sense. Uh, Houston. No. no. Houston's going to go draft a quarterback. Yeah. Uh, Titans at 10, no. Commies at 11, yes. It should, they, but they they're not sense. interested, Allegedly. Supposedly. Allegedly. Uh, Patriots, Lions, no. Vikings, no. Who'd you have at 15? San 49ers. Francisco, maybe. Uh, Green Bay, no. I'm going to be interested to see what happens Monday on him. Are we really all going to sit it out? Why do I feel like that's going to be the only story coming on Monday? Because mm. I, it is all is quiet on the Western Front here. Well, with Rodgers it is. I mean, that was yesterday, and we haven't heard anything, you know, since. So it does feel like that's the only landing spot for him is is New York. It doesn't feel like anyone else is in the mix on that. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how it all shakes out. All right, good job out of you. Coming up next, more from Coach Stefanski, his interview on Pardon My Take. You listen to Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by Valley Bet, coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Uh, as we talked about in the first hour of the program, Kevin Stefanski was on Barstool Sports Part in My Take podcast. We played a couple of clips earlier. We're going to play a couple more now. Let's start with Coach on games and play calling. I have two games for you that I want to know what your instant reaction was after. We'll do good and bad. Okay. Good, uh, the Case Keenum throw against the Saints, the Minneapolis miracle. Yeah. What, how long until you're like, wait, that actually just happened? So I'm up in the coach's booth. Pat Shermer is the offense coordinator. I'm the quarterback coach. I'm up there. And my immediate reaction was like, did he step out of bounds? Because you're not watching the TV copy. You're, you're watching the, the field. And I got people jumping on me, you know, headlocking me, jumping around. And, and, and the whole time, did he step out? Did he step out? And then, obviously, you see that everybody's celebrating. That was totally surreal. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> you don't expect, when, when you're all the way back there where we were, you're kind of like, all right, let's just get in range to throw Hail Mary. Like, okay, if we complete this one to Diggsy, we'll get out of bounds. We'll, we'll launch one in, into the end zone. And then, sure enough, he just, the, unfortunately, the kid made a tough play in the boundary, and Diggsy went right down the sideline. Yeah, yeah. that was insane. And then the bad, uh, the Jets game this year. Ooh. After that game. What was game, the percentage? Yeah, are you what was like, win percentage? I think it was 99.9. Yeah. I think it was actually, they went final um, on, <laughs> on the scoreboard. I wish it did. So, so we, like, are you just, if I, if I were in your shoes, I'd just be sitting in the locker room, like, knowing I have to te speak to the team and just being like, wait, what just happened? Like That was a it. stomach punch. And, yeah, same thing. I, you know, I remember getting back to my office, and before I talked to the team, like, you, the, what hurts the most about those moments is it's hard to win in the, in the NFL. It's hard. And when you have it and you can feel like you can just touch it, and then you're like, I know that's going to come back at the end of the season. That was week yeah. two, I think. Yeah. Um, and you're like, man, I know at the end of the year we're going to want that one back. But you got to go talk to the team. And I think for me, I'm so uh, aware of the team is looking at me, how I respond. Now, what I'm proud of the team is we came back on Thursday night and won against Pittsburgh. Yep. So, so they did rebound. Uh, but those things, they stay with – like, that will never leave me. Yeah. Like, there were about ten things that happened – after Nick Chubb scored and, and a few things before Nick Chubb scored, um, that, that will never leave. That's, I mean, it's, it shows uh, how mature and obviously being like a head coach is about being in those moments, everyone looking at you. Because I think if I were in your shoes, I would have just walked out, <laughs> found the guy who didn't recover the onside, like grab him and be like, why? And then just start crying and go into a puddle. Yeah, I, there was a, a part of me that wanted to do that. Yeah. Um, but I, I just, I know even how you walk in the building on Monday after a loss or a win. Yeah. Like everybody – as a football coach, you get so many opportunities to stand in front of your team, and so much of it is messaging and, and how you want the guys to feel about a game. And even after a win, like, you got to sometimes remind them, you know, that you haven't figured it all out. So I'm very aware of, of my impact that I have. That's so, right. so after a bad loss of that, are you when you address the team, are you doing it to let them see your emotion? Are you doing it to – try to give them something positive to build on what's what goes because you have to like have some sort of plan you can't just go up in front of them and be like that sucked i'm sorry <laughs> yeah. although i might try that yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what i would do yeah i mean honestly you everything i do at least i just i'm try to be authentic about it and not i've been around different coaches or whatever that maybe act you know it's not real or, or and this is you know over the course of time where you just want to be yourself because i think players see right through that so when when stuff it hurts like you gotta let them see that it hurts and when you're excited you let them see that now you know in the moment in games i try to be very even keel just because i feel like you're making decisions every 30 seconds and when i if i start to lose my mind i don't feel like i can make those decisions for the team so i try yeah. to keep my emotions under wraps is, yeah. is there an art to press like pressuring the officials to get in their ear early about certain things Do you know which guys you can push which ones you can pull on they have a tough job, those officials. Um, Good answer. Thank you. I try to. Yeah, <laughs> you said that. I try to. I try to be respectful because um, I know they have a job to do, and then I. They are human. So if there's a play that doesn't go your way, you do want to let them know about that because there's a chance you get. I know officials would tell you there's no such thing as a makeup call, but they're there human. Are. Yeah. Um, so if you let them know how upset you are, there's a chance if there's a 50-50. Uh, ruling maybe it goes your way yeah mm -hmm. no that's fair um what's the dumbest play you've ever created that either did or didn't work i mean it happens every week where you get on the board and you start putting stuff up and you're like this is that margin of smart to dumb is so <laughs> is. fine and like for instance andy reed first bout hall of fame coach super bowl winner unbelievable like the stuff he does in the red zone that like i can't do that you know, you, you have to win a you have to have a ring before you yeah, yeah, ring yeah. around the rosy yes. and yeah. some of that candy stuff. ass. As fun bit. as fun as that is for the players. For us, when it comes to trick plays, that's always like that fine line. Like if this doesn't work, 
I'm going to boo myself. Yeah. And there was a game this year playing the Bengals on uh, Sunday night or Monday night. Uh, maybe it was, yeah, Sunday Mon- night. I think Monday the one night. you won? It was Halloween. Yeah, Monday night. It was Monday yeah. night Halloween. And we had a pass that Amari Cooper threw. And it was – we hand the ball to Nick Chubb. He pitched it to Amari. Amari's rolling out. We had a receiver running down the boundary. Amari, th- their linebacker sniffed it out, is getting ready to hit Amari. Amari's trying to throw it away, and it goes directly to Von Bell, like between the two and the four, like perfect interception right to him. And I'm like, the, the boost, I wanted to boo myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, But I probably should have known. We try to give those trick plays names, and we called that Michael Myers. Oh, Halloween. Halloween. I like, like that. Maybe don't Spooky. name plays after, like, serial killers. Yeah, that yeah. got that you. Was a le- that was a lesson learned. You, yeah. you do own Joe Burrow, though. We didn't beat them second time this year. Not the second time, you but. Beat- Back in 30, quickly, you've you've owned those small Bengals. Sample. Is that yeah. is that just like a matchup thing where you guys feel like you match up well against the Bengals? <laughs> I would tell you this: our division is very very tough. I mean, you got, and I think it's great players. I think it's really good coaches. Uh, whether it's Cincinnati, you know, going to the AFC Championship game back to back years, what Mike T does in Pittsburgh, Coach Harbs in Baltimore. I like that. That's Mike a, T, Coach Harbs. That's a tough division. So th- there's no. Tough. There's no easy game in, in our division. I think whoever comes out of the division, whether it's one or two, sometimes three, you know you're going to get a good team because you're battle. You're up. He would not take the bait. No, on that with the UO no, Joe Burrow would not. We're not going to go down st- that road, kids. Steer out of those waters. Yeah, uh, in a hurry. Uh, they did some rapid fire with Coach Stefanski as well. Uh, let's have a listen to that. All right. So I want to do. I want to get a headline that we can all the Cleveland uh, radio stations can run uh, with Deshaun this year and your running attack. Are you going to let it fly or are you going to run the ball? Can we do both? No, no. you got to pick one or the other. Yeah, I think offensive football, we want to do both. We, uh, we, want, we want the out. You got to either let it fly or run the ball. Minus grade. Uh, I'll let it fly and then run the ball. Does okay. that work? Oh. In one game and then flip it the next That's game. a little interesting. You're not going to establish the run first. That's a fallacy. You don't have to establish a run to throw it. Okay. Well, what about this? How about if you let that thing fly and then you run the damn ball? Uh, uh, how That's about if good. I put that on the call sheet? Okay, okay. I, like I, like that. That. I like I like that. I like both those things. Like What's that. your prediction? Everyone's giving us a prediction this year. Your prediction for the Browns. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> Literally everyone. Um, can, can we go undefeated? Is that yeah. your yeah. prediction? Yes. That's what you should aim I to. mean, you try to win every game. So. Yeah. Wait, right, wh- so, why is it a fallacy to run the, to not I think the play action has been proven that you don't need to have a good run attack or be running the ball to get the linebackers to suck. I disagree. Mm. You, <laughs> you've so been reading. Things, so you can't break these from, like, our fandom and our brains. Like, you have to establish the run. You've been reading the nerd website. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of good data behind it. I mean, for us, honestly, going back to just our players, like, we're fortunate to have Nick. We got David Njoku, I think, is – as good a tight end as there, as there is in the league. So to be able to be balanced, I think, is ultimately the best thing you can be in, in, when it comes to offensive football. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what's more important? If you could pick one, you have to pick one. Protect the quarterback or heat up the quarterback? Ooh, I'd probably heat up the quarterback. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's yeah. the right answer. We're, that's the way have, that you win Super Bowls. We have Miles Garrett. You yeah. know, that's always going to be a big part of what we do. Did what you, about, yeah, go ahead. I was, I was going to kind of dovetail off that. How important Thirty. that the tone? Mm. Hmm. That's some coach speak right there. Yeah. yeah, setting the tone is always good. You get to set the tone on kickoff if you're, yeah. you know, first play of the game is, is either uh-huh. kickoff or kickoff return. You get to set the tone. If you, you ever heard to... the tip of the spear, yes, yeah, First team's tip of the spear. That's yeah, good. I like that. Yes. If, if you had to pick between uh, setting the edge and flying around out there on mm. defense, well, I think you need to set the edge so that you can fly around out there. Okay, yeah, yeah, freeze up space. Lanes, yeah. yeah. I think you have to set the tone so that you can fly around out there. That's good. Good for coach playing along, man. That's good. Um, you know, we it's interesting with coach, right? Because we interviewed him at the combine three years ago and was great. And then it's COVID. So that set off just this different different place we were where we weren't able to get to know him and see him Correct. the way that we would have. Because that had we had that first off season where we were here every day and he was in the building every day and you would have saw you would have seen him a lot better um you you see some of that humor in him uh, we just don't see it that much because we don't see him as much you know and everything kind of changed with covid like everything came back um we're saw well, all the way back you know and, and you, you can be a little looser in the off season in yeah. season i i understand the mentality and and what you have to do and I'd encourage fans to go check out all of it, uh, all that it's podcast. Funny, yeah. It's 47 minutes. You know, we played maybe 10 minutes of it yeah. throughout today's show, but uh, there's a lot more. There's a lot of really good content. 
uh, from it. The guys did a great job with him, and he was like you said, he was a good sport. But yeah, we we have a lot of ammo to talk to him about the next time we see him. That's for sure. Establish the run, let it fly. Like they base all of the little <laughs> things. It, they they just do a fantastic job with that. So much more to come. You listen to Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by Ballybet, coming soon to Ohio on eight fifty ESPN Cleveland. tournament tomorrow potentially uh we're n- not with you tomorrow potentially if, if, buckeyes. if the buckeyes take care of business tonight buckeyes play uh wisconsin tonight at 6 can they turn it around can they make a run five game five no, wins in five no, days no that's no. a lot to ask no the but minimum can you get a couple eh. i think my you know i think you guys you guys are working tomorrow you guys will be working tomorrow don't you worry well well you're anti-buckeye is that did Paulus. you just say that out loud? Guys, I am anti feels, Chris Holtman. Feels like that man has to Paulus go. Paulus out of oh, n- nowhere. Sad. I, I, the Sad. voice of God in my ear. It's I'm telling you. Sad. It's bad. It's bad news over there. Yeah, I'm pretty plugged into that situation <laughs> about what's going on down there. I know. I feel bad. <laughs> I feel bad. It's all happened. No, don't. It's it's fine. I mean, they, they missed on some transfers. It's kind of that simple. Don't worry about it. Spring um, ball started yesterday yeah, for yeah, football. They're good. We got football. You're safe. They can pull the upset tonight. Um, they can absolutely beat with Wisconsin. They played good the last three times out. Uh, gave Michigan State about all they could handle last weekend. 
I wouldn't be surprised if they won one. I think they got to win one to make people feel okay about the last couple of weeks. Uh, by the way, he's not going anywhere. He's got an $18 million buyout. So he's, he's got, and he's got the number four class in the country coming in. So they'll stay exactly where it is. So that's the way that goes. There you go. Go have a cocktail, Paulus. That's where that goes. I'm going to have to. All right. Um, the next level, I can tell you, is coming up next. And we will uh, maybe be back tomorrow. Maybe not. We'll see. Maybe. You listen to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.